And welcome to the Evidence and Reasons for the Christian Faith video channel. I'm your host, Salvador Cordova. This channel explores evidences for the Christian faith. We try to provide here information to help Christians build and defend their faith. This channel tends to uh, cater to the community of uh, graduate students in the sciences and professional researchers and engineers. Uh, that's partly because that's my background. I'm an independent molecular biophysics researcher and former engineer and scientist in the aerospace and defense industry. I have five science degrees. And uh, I know it may shock some people, but it was through the study of science that I was reassured of my Christian faith when I nearly left 20, about 20 years ago. Tonight, we'll be covering the incredible saga of Mark Gottlieb, who just incredible how much he has suffered through life, but God delivered him through so many things. The Christian faith is strengthened by the study of science, and we've there are lots of shows about that here uh, on this channel, where we explore why uh, naturalistic abiogenesis and, and evolutionary theory are not adequate explanations to explain the complexity of life. But the best explanation for the features of life are an intelligent designer. And beyond that, um, even though there is intelligent design evidence of it, it's also obvious that the world, uh, the world is suffering and there's a lot of evil. And this conforms to the Christian viewpoint that that the world is both intelligently designed and also cursed and in need of a savior. And so right there, just by physical observations, we see that the world is in line and is, in cons and is consistent with Christian doctrine. That the world is created, and, but also cursed and in need of a savior. One of the evidences, however, that Jesus is the Christ and he is who he says he is and that the Christian faith is the true religion is, is the fact of conversions. What has happened in people's lives who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It says in 1 Peter 1.8, though you have not seen him, uh, you love him. And there is an effect that people that call upon the name of the Lord and trust him, that their lives are permanently changed in such a way that you know that something divine has happened. I had the privilege of um, being interviewed by Mark Gottlieb to become a member of McLean Bible in 2019, even though I had been on and off a regular, and, a, a sporadic attender at McLean Bible since 1983. Um, I'll cover just a little bit of the, the drama there, but I really want to focus on Mark Gottlieb. He's a, he's, he's a former elder at McLean Bible. He's not in agreement with the present leadership under David Platt, um, which I think has been a disaster. So uh, Mark Gottlieb is uh, one of the good guys that was part of the uh, McLean Bible Church uh, when it was at its zenith. Let me read a little bit about Mark here uh, from a biography that you'll find um, in the WAVA interview, and I put the link in the uh, in the video description. So let me just read it here. So here's a picture of Mark. Mark Gottlieb has been an entrepreneur most of his life. His first major company was Design Tech International, which produced over 125 million in consumer electronics products, mostly automotive, automotive and telephone accessories. His last company was Logic Mark LLC, which produced a line of personal emergency response systems for, for the home healthcare market. This company received the honor of making the Inc. 500 5000 awards two years in a row for its record growth before we sold the company in 2011. 
Mark earned two master's degrees from Stanford University, one in engineering and one in engineering management and the other in product design. After graduate school, Mark worked as a consultant for SRI International and taught as an associate professor at George Washington University. Mark is a serial inventor and has been awarded 30 US patents and numerous foreign patents. Mark is active in his angel investing area, supporting and me mentoring several startups. Uh, startups. He is on the advisory board at George Mason University, as well as several other board positions with several companies and charities. He's also active in the community. Mark lives in Fairfax Station with his wife, Sharon. They have four children and 10 grandchildren. Mark's interests include exotic expedition travel, photography, mentoring young men, mathematical art, 3D printing, and woodworking. That right there is an incredible resume and, and biography, but that's only a fraction of the story. Mark was raised uh, in a atheist Jewish home, uh, which actually surprised me. He just seemed like such a dedicated believer. I thought maybe he must have been raised up that way, and he was not. He was he was an atheist Jew, a liberal atheistic Jew, and. Um, when it said he had two graduate degrees, he actually entered graduate school at age at the young age of 20. That means he probably entered college at age 16, graduated in four years. And this is not just any ordinary college. It's Stanford, one of the top universities on the planet. And then he became a professor. So he moved here to the Washington, D.C. area. Um, through a long story, he ended up uh, being encouraged to visit church, McLean Bible, and he would listen to Lon Solomon's sermons. And 30 years later, he was still going to church there. He became an elder. So uh, in that process, obviously, he became a Christian. He shared part of his story with me because I, I told him, I said, hey, Mark, you know, I do have some discipline issues, and uh, I have a feeling you might be able to help me. Uh, to kind of just improve myself as a human being and the way that I handle my life. And I think God has answered that prayer. He would, he would write to me just to check up on how I'm doing and, and reach out. He invited me to church and I got to worship with him the last two weeks uh, at his church um, on his invitation. So, so that, that's the story of his conversion but it's the way he's lived his walk during that time. So he's explaining to me that um, the Lord called him to be uh, a business professional. He would work 80 hours a week, but he still had 25 hours left in his week to spend time with his family and do church. He would, he would go to the Division of Motor Vehicles, the Virginia Division of Motor Vehicles on Saturday morning, where they had a angry mob of people who lined up to do their business to get their driver's licenses and registrations and all that and license plates and uh, those familiar with the virginia dmv system uh, you know it's kind of a mess and it's a hassle and to that mob he would do street preaching and he does have a little bit of a stutter it's not very noticeable but it's just amazing god would call him to do this and yet you would not realize that he's a very, very successful, very, very successful businessman. Um, it mentioned in that bio of two companies, I think he had several. And he's he's very accomplished person. And I think I could share this. He suffered. He was run, once run over by a car. He'd suffered cancer four times. And he just never quit. In 2019, he was in a mountain biking accident that left him paralyzed, quadriplegic. And uh, I remember in 2019, you know, he interviewed me to be a member of the church. He lobbied that I become a member. And um, I, I needed special permission because I wanted to be a dual member. 
And he said, okay, he worked out a deal that when my mother passed away, I'd return the McLean Bible, which I did. And I think the current leadership is kind of regretting that now because I'm trying to get them ousted. Anyway, um, shortly, a shortly after that, I got the terrible news that he had broken his neck in a biking accident. And um, we were, uh, the people who were, who were very interested in his plight were receiving letters, daily letters from his wife. And we were praying for him. And after a few months, I just gave up. I said, well, you know, I gave up praying for his healing. I said, I, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. And then two years later, with all the drama at McLean Bible Church, there was a very critical vote on June 30th. And I, I was waiting in line to get my ballot. Now, just to understand, McLean Bible is like a half million dollar empire. If you, if you tally the expected revenues over the next 10, 15 years, plus their asset base, it's about half a billion dollars. This is a big deal. So I was waiting in line to get, uh, I had to show my ID to get my ballot to vote. It was a big vote and it's led to now some um, legal injunctions that is now creating a jury trial for David Platt. And as I was waiting in line, I, I thought I was seeing things. I saw Mark Gottlieb, I said, I, who's this guy that's walking? He's walking. And, and I was like, I think I'm seeing things because last I heard he was a quadriplegic. And I said, okay, I, you know, as soon as I get my ballot, I'm going to look for him and God willing, I'll see him. Well, I didn't see him that night, but I found out later from friends that he'd actually recovered enough that he was able to drive. And I was told that he drove himself to that meeting. Um, he is able to drive, whether it was his wife that drove him there, I don't know specifically, but he's able to walk with a limp and he's able to drive. Praise the Lord. And it turned, uh, David Platt wanted to try to parade him as if God was approving in working with the elder board and Mark wanted nothing to do with it. Um, you know, he would not let that miracle of God uh, be used in that way. And, and and I respect him. I respect him for that. And Mark has publicly written a letter about his um, concerns about the present leadership, and that's a matter of public record. But, um, you know, when I saw that, I said, you know, <laughs> we care sometimes too much about this or that, and God takes care of the big things. The fact that a man that couldn't walk, couldn't even use his hands to feed himself, um, came back to life, not completely whole, but we're still praying for his full recovery. That was enough to say, hey, Sal and everyone else, um, you know, God's taking care of things, that there are things far more important than things we worry about. Now, the other incredible thing, and you'll get it in the um, in the podcast, which I linked to, was um, when Mark was there paralyzed. And, and just get this, he doesn't know that he's going to get healed. He's lying in the hospital bed. He decides not, you know, in, in most hospital rooms, they, they'll provide you a television. He said, I'm not going to watch television. For 40 days, he prayed for all the nurses and staff that attended to him. There's just no quit in this guy that he's going to do the Lord's work no matter what, even if all he can do is to offer a prayer for someone when his arms and legs can't even move. With his very last breath, he's fighting for God's glory and for God's people and for the lost. And um, he's just an example of a wonderful citizen, a wonderful human being. 
uh, an example for all of us to be inspired by. And, you know, just the more that I get to know him, the more that I praise God uh, for, for seeing what he's done, what the Lord has done in people's lives. It's inspired me to carry on. Uh, Mark, I was telling Mark, I said, you know, I have a hard time doing certain things. I tend to avoid them. He said, well, you got to suck it up. So what you need to do, Sal, is you write down a list of hard things you know you need to do and you don't like, and you try to do them. And each time you do that, you'll be less, it'll be less painful. You'll be able to. And, and given what he's been through, I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I think I could endure a little more pain in my life and, you know, try to deal with the things I need to deal with. Just, um, you know, they're just ordinary mundane things that I let slide that I shouldn't. And, um, you know, Mark said, you know, just, just, just do that. You know, it's, you do the right thing. You do the right thing. And, and God does make clear sometimes, you know, we know what the right thing often is to do. And we just don't get around to it. We'll, we'll postpone it. So uh, that very day, and I, I said, Mark, can you pray for me? And this is about two weeks ago. That very day, I started to, to get healing for kind of just kind of that some of those personal issues that are a little bit annoying and that are holding me back and I started to function better and become more efficient and uh, cut out some things in my life so that's the story of Mark um, you know really not much about the McLean drama but you know David Platt has been going around saying that um, there's a divisive group out there that's trying to get him removed from leadership. And I'm just like, well, David, you know, don't say stuff like that. If you look at the drop in attendance, it's very clear that it's David Platt who's divisive because 80% of the brick and mortar attendance is gone. 80% of the church has left him on Sunday mornings. And, um, and Mark Gottlieb was one of them. So um, I just wanted to say, you know, there's really some good people that were part of the church that I'm a part of and a real inspiration. And so uh, that's mostly the show tonight. Um, it's not my usual long nerd monologue. And I hope that that will uh, encourage and inspire some of you. So take care and the Lord richly bless you. Thank you.